Okay, so we're back and uh, we're going to start out with something that we think is really important because the uh, ski swaps are coming up and in addition to the swaps, a lot of you are going to be going to stores trying to buy uh, a proper boot. And so we're going to cover boots because all boots are not created equal. And we have found this out, Ted and I, over the last uh, umpteen seasons, um, you know, trying to fit our feet, uh, trying to find the boot that gives us the best performance and something we can work with as opposed to working against us, uh, also within the price range that we want to spend. And those are all considerations that all of you have to make. So I'll stop talking. I'll let Ted start with his introduction of boots that he's used uh, for a while and how they adapted and how they, how they are different in styles. And then we'll continue. Okay. So the other day I get a, the other day I get a phone call from Jim, and he says, what's the most important thing that you do, you know, get ready for snowboarding. And I said to Jim, I can hear you. Here's my, here's my, here's my do. All gear all the time. Cause every time I go out on my motorcycle, I'm, I'm, you know, let it up. Got, got skid, skid pants on. Go out skateboarding. Yep. Helmet, hands, everything I can do. So I said, all gear all the time. And he goes, no, no, more specific. And I was like, Okay, and then I got to get a hint. So the hint is boots, because what are you going to do? You're going to spend the day on your feet, and if your feet are uncomfortable, man, it's terrible. So it's like, okay, go through my boots. So the story with my boots and so forth, here's my first and my, my longest ride, and it's the oldest one still that I have. It's a Nike. It's got a whole bunch of bells and whistles. It was recommended to me by a snowboarder. I was having problems getting enough rides out of the boots, the boots that I was buying. They were falling apart and soaking uh, by the end of the season. Um, whole bunch of things. That was a recommendation. That's a great boot. I love it. It's now soft, broken in, and it's like a slipper, which I don't want to ride on necessarily. The next one was... So, go back to the original one. Okay. What were the features you really liked the most about that boot? Ah, okay. So, one, it was... The, the, the size of it was, was perfect. My foot fit in it. Two, I eventually got orthotics, which makes it absolutely comfortable. These are custom made. Um, it has a strap in here, which compressed and held the tongues in. Um, the lace was good for my control and uh, the pull up in the inside, I could do with that or do without it. But So one of the problems that pull up seem to have uh, they throughout the, they get loose. Yeah. No matter what type of tightener it has on the top, you guys can count on it getting loose. Yeah, but that, it was it, a real comfortable boot. Power strap power strap at the top on the inside and the outside um, just a very secure feel and it's good good feel All right. as these started to wear out um, I looked for more of them and couldn't find them because they stopped making them I guess um, went to the Adidas on another recommendation which model Adidas is that? that's a Samba okay um, this one has more volume space in the in you can the, see that right now it's it's got a way bigger nose um, area there and stuff uh which would make your bindings fit a little bit different too again with the orthotic it it had a a, a a very close similarity so it was comfortable it didn't snug up the same way but again i using laces that was good and several mm -hmm. seasons down uh, Actually, yeah. while riding on the Adidas, in between that, you fell over on your motorcycle and you hurt your hand. And uh, then you couldn't use yeah, your I laces. I did. I but that that the, the reason I couldn't use the laces was for another reason. But yeah, yeah, I ended up going to this Boa Boa pull strap boot, and I went in for that reason alone. I I went in and said I need Boas because I can't. I couldn't use my fingers. So this um, happens sometimes just getting older, arthritis. Yeah, that was arthritic. Um, and a 
cold exposure, which gets kind of murder. Uh, this one, again, has an inside strap, uh, which works pretty well. Um, I didn't like these as much. They weren't as comfortable. I've broken them in. Uh, they still don't ride as comfortable, and Jim, just by looking at them, pointed out some more things to me. So, what was that? Um, size of the ankle and the heels uh, probably change how the foot and, and the uprightness. So the flex point on the two boots, They're for different. you being shorter with your ankle being not up as high, fit better to the Adidas than it did to the 32, which has a flex point you can see just looking at yeah. it, where the crease is cut, it's higher up. Ted found the 32s to be stiffer than he liked because the backstay also went up higher on his leg than the other two boots. And after riding a long day, I would get a tweak yes. in, in my right ankle. Uh, okay. and, and there's a, there's differences between my right and left ankle. So it, it proves again that all boots are not created yeah, equal. Yeah. They all look similar, but they're not created equal. Big surprise so. to look at that today. But as I say, these two boots are, they're just, they're wonderful to ride on and lots of. Okay, so now. So I'm, I'm just kind of stepping in and bring Ted's orthotic and back. He's, he's going to. Over here, so bring your orthotic back. So you will have heard from us, and I'm gonna say you'll hear from Averin also. The most important thing you can do when you get your new boots is to take the manufacturer's foot bed and throw it away, <laughs> throw it away. They, they put the thinnest thing they can put in there with no, no heel cup built into it, no body in the fore part of it to support your foot, nothing. They, they will do nothing for you. So, for me, I have gone to this company called Sol, and uh, you can see that I've got a nice heel, heel arch in here on this side. It's very solid. It is not flexible and flimsy. It does twist and everything. Got a great heel cup in it, and I, and I, I swear this is the insole I buy. I, put, I heat it. Sometimes, a lot of times, I just wear it in. It will mold to your foot. Beautiful. Uh, going into that ride this year, and one of the ride boots I got, I pulled their insert out, but you can also see that flexiness I talked about. You don't see the buildup in the footbed. But what you do see on this ride with uh, the Impacto Elite uh, footbed is a nice groove section here that forms up and shapes very nicely around the back of your heel, provided that fits. Nevertheless, this will come out of my ride boots and this will go in. So we'll just, we'll just stay with that. So I have um, three boots on the table. Let's start with the first boot. Uh, the first boot I'm going to talk about is the Ride um, the, 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 my brain, uh, Lasso, the Ride Lasso. And what I did is I pulled the liners out so that I can break the boot down a little bit more for you. If you look inside here, you can see that I've got a thermal lining on the bottom. Ride has put in there to kind of keep the cold down, something they hadn't been doing. So that silver area is the liner. This is a double boa, which opens this way, and, and, and the uh, heel lockdown is on this side. So this will pull the heel down here. This will pull the cuff back, etc. just like any standard boa. Uh, the nice part about this boot is it has a great internal boot. So it has a, a solid uh, foam, great backstay on the back of this thing. It's not hard, but it's stiff. This is the intuition foam that they use in it. I also have the pull-up. And what I like about the pull-up on the ride lasso is, I only have to click this in, if you hear that click. Click this in. From there, I just pull up on the, on the strap itself. And it snugs. That stays where it's at. Ah, like that. And then I lock it down. I'm done. This doesn't slip like these do over here. Yeah. Okay? So I love, uh, love the way this works. And to get out, I simply pull up, on clicks, take, pop it forward, on click it, slide it up, and, and I'm done. So I, I really like that setup on the, on the lasso. And that's a great liner. 
So I want to come into boots are not the same. So we'll move this over, what we talked about. It's got a great uh, Vibram sole on it too and stuff. Flex point is about where it should be for me. Come over to the next boot that I bought, which is a Ride Fuse. I bought this boot sight on scene other than looking on, online at it. And I, I, I remember telling you guys that Ted and I saw what we liked laces because with the laces, I could kind of customize how I went up, how I tightened it, where it was loose, etc. And it seemed to work pretty good. Um, so I bought this boot for that reason. It's a lace on the outside, but it's a lockdown heel section on the left side. So opening up again, we don't have a power strap or anything on this particular boot. So we just have that. We've got a great backstay here, solid. Again, we have the nice grippy soles, etc., etc. If I break a lace, I can replace it. It costs me a couple of bucks. If I break a boa, depending on where I break it, whether I break the dial or I snap the line. If I snap the line, I got a real problem. Because it's got to be re rerouted, and I'm not good at that. Anyhow, again, it's the intuition liner. But they call it the taco wrap. See it? So it wraps around. So taco wrap means it opens up here, comes around, gets your foot in it real nice because it can open it right up, lap it over, seal it, whatever. But look at the opening. Check the opening on this. Something I did not do before I bought this boot. Although I'm going to use it, I love it. But because of the size of my calf going in here, at the top, I get a minimal attachment on the yeah. Velcro on the side. Yeah. I'll get enough because the boot will close up with the laces to keep it here, but I don't get much overlap on the side, very little. And that kind of disappointed me a little, but I'll make it work. So coming over to a boot that brought me to the taco wrap was my um, Talon, my Nidecker Talon. Uh, which is actually a little bit stiffer than both my lasso and the fuse. But it has an asymmetrical type tongue, meaning it's off at an angle, etc. It also has the pull cord and all, all of that stuff. But what we brought, brought me to it was the massive opening to get in and out. <sighs> I can go in like a slipper, I can come out like a slipper at the end of the day, and I've got overlap. You saw it right there. Plus, on this particular one, I have a power strap, an internal power strap, which helped me to bring that overlap tight in the middle here and pull it back as tight as I want. And I'm kind of a rider who rides a little more tight than loose with my boots. Uh, a lot of people want looser. So it comes down to this too. Let's talk about boots. You're going to buy a boot. Buy the boot for how many days you're gonna ride. You're gonna ride four days and you weigh 200 pounds. You might get away with a kind of a floppy, sloppy, relaxed, flexing boot, four days. You're not gonna wear it out. But being 200 pounds, when you start to lean fore and aft or frontward, toe side and heel side, the boot may not support you as well. If you're lighter, no hmm. problem. Girl, young kids, no problem. How do you know the boot fits? Slide your foot into the boot. Tighten it all up. Turn around and take your foot, take your foot and tap your toe against the ground. If your foot touches the front and your toe touches, it's okay. Once you lace it up, it should pull your heel back in the boot, further back, and should relieve any touch that you had up here. So if the toe touches going in, don't throw it away and say it's too small. Find out after you've laced up and the foot is pulled back into the heel cup, if the toe is there. Now when you tap the toe, you feel the end, but it doesn't hurt. Mm. Probably the right size. So there are some sites that will tell you to buy two sizes too small. Mm. I think that site, the guy probably wears a helmet that are two sizes too small. <laughs> and there will be a reason for that because there isn't enough to fill it up. <laughs> okay, so just don't do that. Don't buy a boot too small. On the opposite side, don't buy a boot that's too big either. Buy a boot that fits your foot, that feels good. So you need 20 to 25 minutes with both boots on because nobody has two feet that are exactly the same size. So we'll edit out 
the camera falling off. Yeah, it's a Where crash with no snow. Where was I? Uh, too big, too small. Whatever. Anyhow, so if you're going to board a lot, you're going to need a you're going to need a boot that that has a little more stiffness to it. However, stiffness, non-stiff. Are you going to be a parky? Are you going to go out and jump and leap on things, etc.? So what you want out of that boot is a good boot that it has a good impact and absorption. You yeah. might want to have a lot of ankle tweak in it, cool, but you want it to land and not get slammed in the bottom of your foot because you're in a park a lot. You're going to go out and carve a lot. You're not going to be in the park. You're, you're in beautiful soft snow. Maybe you want a stiffer boot so when you lean over and lean in and pull back, that thing rails up for you a lot. I don't know. You have to figure that stuff out as you go along. But I will say, a medium flex boot for most people, if you're starting, will be the way to go. Buying it softer means it's going to not hold up as long and you're going to have to replace it. So that's our take on boots. And we want you to know what we said in the beginning all boots are not created equal. So do your shopping, do your research, get out there. And when you get to the shops and stuff, try them on walk around in them because if your feet hurt like Ted said in the beginning you are not going to have a good day all day long no. so we hope this helps and I'm sure it does and it's a lot of information but it's important information so we're going to sign out on that unless Ted wants to jump up here and add anything well he does because he wants to tell you what to do when you store your boot Jim, Jim has a house with closets and I don't uh, so everything goes in the garage in the off season old sock filled with cornstarch and some foot powder drop that in leave it there we're good and what does that do for it? well it's going to absorb any kind of moisture that's in there it's not going to allow any moisture to get created it smells better <laughs> um, <laughs> and it just keeps the it it's just a way of taking care of that boot through it's not right. going to get mildew. It's not going to get any of those things. It just sits like it's in a closet. Okay, so last thing on that would be, uh, if you're going to store your boots and it's the end of the season, pull your liners out, pull your footbeds out, let the yeah. things thoroughly dry, and then put them away. And on your shell, go ahead and lace it up, uh, do the bow up so it, can, it stays in a configuration of ride yeah. as opposed to the configuration of put me on, and uh, you'll be ready to go in the next season. Also, you know, for my footbeds, again, because they're custom, you know, getting them in was a lot of work. So sometimes the boots keep them in over the... the yeah, and taking the liner out, pull your footbed out first and you'll find your liner comes out easier afterwards. Yeah. So, and the, la the yeah. last thing is, it's just a cheap carry um, piece of pipe, got a hole in it, got some line through it, slip it through the back. And I can carry my boots. Kind of old school the way we used to carry our ski boots. Yeah. So. Okay. That's it. So we're out on that. Hope to see you guys on the slopes in three more weeks. I'm going, <laughs> I'm going but with of course, four. I'm going with four. But okay. Ted's going with four now. He did have it slated a little earlier. I had it earlier. I'm almost that. thinking it could be six, but I don't want it to be. All right. See you guys All later right. on the slopes. Cheers. We're out.